Hello everyone, welcome back to Legally Blind. This is Zuma and he's also happy to see you. Hi buddy, hi buddy. I have really missed making videos and putting out content for you guys, but there has been a lot going on. I actually shot the footage for this video that you're about to see um, several months ago, but it has been impossible for me to um, edit and post more regularly because so much has happened and I want to share some of that with you. Some of you might know, but probably most of you don't. I actually have two jobs, two part-time jobs. Uh, I teach at a, a university in Cairo and I train dogs. This little fella over here is one of my client's dogs and he's spending some time in my house and he is the sweetest ever. I also got COVID uh, right in the middle of the semester. So that actually happened right after I shot the footage for this video and just really delayed me. And um, uh, it's been really difficult to concentrate, really difficult to get work done. I was behind on grading and just no energy whatsoever. I am mostly recovered now and will hopefully get the vaccine soon, but I still have a little bit of a, a problem with energy. Um, but here I am. What I actually wanted to do in this video, and this is what you're about to see, is show you one of my recent obsessions that I've really gotten into and that has been taking a lot of taking up a lot of my time, and that is gardening. I really got into gardening last fall, and it's really been amazing addition to my life. Uh, it has improved my mental health significantly and it's just bringing me so much joy and other people as well because I get to propagate plants and give them to people as gifts and it's just every day there's something new going on and what I want to do in this video is give you just a little plant tour. Uh, keep in mind this was filmed back in like March or maybe even late February and um, so some of these plants I don't have anymore and I have some new ones and yeah, so anyways, don't worry, this is not gonna turn into a gardening channel. And I do talk in this video about some of the things I managed to do just by touch and how useful touch is for me to know, um, you know, to, to evaluate the health of my plants and know what to do with them. Uh, and I would really love to hear from anyone watching this who uh, is also visually impaired and loves gardening or uh, especially if someone is completely blind and loves to garden. Um, I would love that. Um, I also talk about other senses like smell and, and just how other senses can bring joy while gardening and just make it possible and enjoyable. Right, Zuma? He loves to come outside with me when I'm watering the plants and taking care of them. You should really give this video a thumbs up if you think Zuma is adorable. And how could you possibly not? I'm gonna let him take a nap. So let me actually start outside because the light is really nice outside now. And tomorrow I'll film inside. Um, oh, there's always soil on the floor now. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, I've got on this side some plants and on that side lots more plants even on the wall and here on top of the dog crate so let's start here got some chard this is my baby cherry tomato plant can't wait to eat from this got some banana peels drying here more chard this is a night blooming jasmine that produces blooms that have a really really nice smell at night some dill, baby dill, um, over here. So I put this, these um, shelves here because I often have to get my face very, very close to my plants to check on the soil and stuff because um, I can't see otherwise. And I found that it was really kind of hurting my back. So I try to put them high up a little bit. Save my back. Some geraniums. Got three different coleuses here. This is one. 
This is one. Beautiful stuff. Actually, you guys should take a better look at this one because it's gorgeous. Look at that. And this one. This is my oldest coleus doing super well. I'll be propagating it soon. This is a succulent called Ionium tree. Also beautiful. Very leathery leaves. Um, this has a really funny name. Uh, I propagated this from the street. It's called a hot and tot fig. <laughs> Belongs to the family of pig faces. So two funny names. It's more pig face. Produces a really nice flower when it blooms, but not yet. It's a purple daisy. All right, and on this side, first I have this bougainvillea, which I love. Um, this was a plant that was pretty much dead. Um, it was really big, but it died, and I had to cut it back down until I found um, some life, and I stopped there. It had no leaves, so I just kept taking care of it, and as you can see now, it is growing again. And it's gorgeous. Love it. I'm thinking of maybe bonsai training this one. Make it look like a bonsai, but we'll see. Here I've got some arugula. I'm letting this one flower and see if I can get some seeds. And I've got two more here. This is maybe a, a little too small of a pot for what I'm trying to do, but love eating from those. It's one of my pepper plants, which will also need a go in a bigger deeper pot soon but doing pretty well and over here got the bulk of everything got some like big uh, ficus trees lining here I was gonna get more but um, I'm trying to conserve water and uh, big stuff take uh, needs a lot of water so I'm trying to make as good of as good use of the space as possible, so I've planted some other things in the same pots here. Got some basil and more um, parsley, but not in these one back there. Um, <laughs> if you're wondering what this mess is, this is a bunch of grass clippings that I'm allowing to dry so I can use them as mulch later. On the wall here, I've got an elephant bush and parsley. It's parsley, uh, more parsley, uh, some seeds I'm trying to sprout, which probably are not going to germinate, but we'll see. The elephant bush is native to South Africa, and elef elephants eat it, hence the name. Um, I'm trying to bonsai this one as well, it's a beautiful plant. Um, okay, let's step back a little so you can see everything, kind of. I've got some sunflowers scattered throughout here, but they haven't bloomed yet. I will show you a close-up in a bit. This is a um, something called a rugosa rose, I believe. And check it, it's got buds. It's got buds. So excited. Uh, this was also a plant that was very sick and had almost no leaves. And I treated it with my own uh, homemade pesticide and now it's all beautiful full of beautiful green leaves no brown spots and it actually has a bud at every single uh, stem now at the tip of every stem and before I even got to editing this video all these roses opened up Very impatient to see those sunflowers, sunflowers, uh, lemongrass, basil. Uh, this is some kind of weed that I pulled out of the ground uh, in the street and I'm waiting for it to flower so I can know what it is. Got some spearmint over here, uh, lavender, waiting for that to bloom too. This is one of my favorites. It is a um, uh, Duranta genus. Um, Golden Dewdrops is a common name. Uh, produces uh, purple flowers when it blooms, but I think 
it has to be older to bloom maybe next year it'll bloom who knows but yeah if you give it enough sun all the leaves will turn golden like this or most of them i think so and here's some rosemary another type of daisy apparently this one can tolerate drought more than the purple one uh here's my other pepper plant this was my the first one that was quite strong um I tried a lot with peppers but it wasn't the right time when i was trying to germinate them this was my strongest seedling and it's uh, still doing fine I might eventually need an even bigger pot um, onions that i'm growing just to uh, ward the pests away and these are probably hoary buckwheat it's been uh, tough identifying some of these without flowers but in Egypt people just grow this plant around their flower beds and other plants just for sort of uh, landscaping and beauty but I love them even on their own because their leaves are so velvety um, they are a type of succulent so they don't need much water as well. I think they, if it really is a hoary buckwheat, then um, should bloom yellow flowers uh, in the summer. More sunflowers, and this was my strongest sunflower seedling. You can see how um, thick the stem is, which is why I put that one on its own in a pot, because I wanted to just give it the best chance possible of being staying strong and being awesome. Um, and it's got a bud. See that? I hope this is focusing. Yeah, this is a sunflower bud. But and these are crown of thorns uh, succulents. They are all over Egypt. Um, oh, this is also a sunflower that I'm growing in a burlap sack just to try the air pruning method and see how good it is. So we'll see. Doing a lot of experimenting. More sunflowers. Now this guy, this is a Madagascar palm and in winter it had zero leaves. Well, it kind of held on to one leaf until sort of February and then it dropped even that leaf and had nothing. And then just these tiny, tiny brown leaves started emerging from the tip and then they grew and turned green. Now you can see how beautiful they are and they're still gonna get much bigger actually and it might also start growing leaves all the way down the stem or in various parts we'll see uh, and it also uh, blooms pink flowers I think uh, but probably not until summer I don't know we'll see this is a navel orange tree which all of its leaves when I underwatered it one time uh, but now they're all coming back look at that look at that I, I fixed my mistake and leaves 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 and I think there was actually a tiny fruit on here somewhere oh there I think oh, there. I don't think these are gonna survive at the moment but uh, they other was others will come up and those should survive uh, got more crown of thorns so crown of thorns is actually grown very very prolifically in Cairo to the point that it's actually starting to become kind of boring to me but I have propagated a couple of plants and here they are doing well they've got roots this one needs a new pot because the clay is broken this is a, a, a recent purchase the type of succulent again uh, called pencil pencil cactus it's not a cactus though it's a succulent but sometimes people use these interchangeably and uh, here's another go growing this these uh, parsley and basil plants in the same pots with the ficus ficus whatever uh, yeah so uh, yeah who knows maybe I will group these trees next to each other somehow and kind of create filtered light over here because I'm expecting that it's gonna be super hot in the summer and some of these things might not like it that hot 
Certainly not the cacti and succulents, but maybe some of these guys. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to keep everything alive. We'll see. Again, I love those things. I think they're kind of underappreciated. Anyways, these are pretty much all of my. Oh my god, I forgot my desert rose. How could I? Here it is. Beautiful, beautiful succulent that kind of already grows like a bonsai. You know, kind of you don't really have to train it very much to be a bonsai. It's got these this thick stem full of uh, moisture, so it doesn't need to be watered very often. And here is the flowers, flower buds. Two over here already. Can't wait. I was not expecting this to bloom so early in spring, but the buds already. So exciting. Yeah, desert rose. Uh, yeah, so I and here are my two compost bins. This is the old one. It's pretty much done composting. Uh, this is a new one that I'm still filling as I go. Anyway, I can't stress enough how happy gardening has made me uh, in the last few months. Uh, it was, totally came out of nowhere, sort of out of the blue. Uh, I used to not be really that interested in plants, but uh, I particularly enjoy propagating and experimenting with stuff. Um, I think the reason I wasn't so interested in the beginning was that I tried growing stuff and it died and I didn't understand why. But now that I know where to look for information and how to keep things alive, um, things are much more interesting. But yeah, it's uh, challenges with gardening for my eyesight have to do with uh, things like the ability to spot pests and uh, sometimes dealing with very, very small seeds when I'm trying to germinate things. Like these. Look at these guys. So tiny. I actually have to say that when I take photos and videos and then zoom in on my computer, I can usually see stuff on my plants that I never noticed before. These are tiny gooseberry seedlings. Might actually use a magnifier and tweezers maybe or something to handle these. I have ways of working around that. So for pests, for example, I've made my own homemade pesticide spray with um, baking soda and neem oil and essential oils. And I just spray it sort of once a week on everything or most things. And uh, it just, it's preventative and I don't have to deal with anything. So far I have not had a single bad pest situation. Knock on wood. Love it, love it, love it. I would like to raise more plants higher up so I don't have to bend down so much to check moisture. Sometimes even when I'm using this hose, I still have to bend really low um, to see how much water I'm giving it. And uh, I still haven't learned enough to just do that by feel or by uh, listening to the water going in the soil, but yeah, if there's one thing that's really troubling me um, or making this less fun is the having to bend down a lot to check stuff. My back does not like that very much, even though I do exercise and lift weights and stuff, but you know, if um, anyone who's watching is completely blind and still enjoys gardening, I would love to hear how you um, still enjoy it and how you still manage to keep things happy and alive. There's a lot of touch involved in gardening. You have to touch the soil to know how moist it is. Um, so, so like this type of soil, which is a bit more clay-based, um, is it just gets really hard when it's dry on top almost like solid this one has some give to it still which is how you know it's still got moisture in there but like this kind of soil is actually not soil it's potting mix uh, which doesn't have any real soil in it it's just compost uh, perlite 
peat moss, uh, pieces of bark, etc. Um, and, and that dries up differently. It, it stays loose like this, but yeah, the feel of it is different. So there are a lot of things you can do just using your sense of touch in gardening. There are also so many different textures to enjoy with plants. Like, can you hear that? This is a very scratchy leaf. This is a sunflower. Um, it's uh, it's almost like it's got hair on it. Like some tiny, teeny, tiny hairs. I can't see them, so I don't know if that's actually true, but that's how it, what it feels like. It's very uh, sandpapery, almost. Whereas this is more soft. Um, this is even softer. Of course, there are also like so many smells. I just like caught a whiff of mint and basil. Um, while this plant, for example, this uh, bougainvillea has very papery leaves. Uh, actually, one of its common names is a paper plant or something like that, or paper leaf. Or I can imagine that even if you can't see the plants at all, there's still a lot of enjoyment to get out of this. Also, leaves feel different when they are uh, when the plant is thirsty, as opposed to when it's got the water it needs. Um, you could also feel when the plant is drooping. You can definitely do all of that. I would definitely love to hear from any blind gardeners who are completely blind uh, to tell us how they garden and how they can still appreciate and enjoy this because it truly is awesome. And back inside the house and out into my bal balcony, bedroom balcony, I've uh, got a ton of other plants in here. <clears throat> Beautiful colorful croton. These are um, olive branches that I'm trying to propagate. Hopefully at least one of them turns into an actual olive viscous. So a bunch of propagation projects going on here in the boxes and all the covered stuff. Um, you can't really see anything in there, but I've always got multiple projects going in case one of one or two don't work out. Something's gonna work out, hopefully. <clears throat> Snake plant. Another little contraption I made. All the plastic is just to keep the moisture in so I don't have to water it very often. Uh, these are daisy branches that hopefully will sprout new roots and growth. Uh, this guy had a little accident. This is also a croton but a different variety. This one fell down here. Um, on a windy day, and most of the leaves broke off, as you can see. Now I'm trying to uh, get it back. This Shaflera dwarf umbrella tree is doing super well, putting out a ton of new leaves all the time. Very happy plant. Uh, a bunch more succulents and roses. Uh, got a couple of avocado le uh, seeds here. Strawberries. This is a relatively new plant that I just got. Look at that. Ah. I've had these are marigold seedlings. I've had really bad luck, really low success rate with marigold seedlings. I don't know, they just keep dying. I don't understand why, but I will not give up. Another coleus, big aloe vera. Um, Another geranium and another little strawberry plant. It's not really the best time to be growing strawberries, but anyways. Uh, this is a cordyline. Uh, we have this all over Cairo actually. I had this one in the sun originally and it didn't like that very much, but now it's happy. And it's got here, there's a new leaf coming. And this leaf is still in the process of unfurling. <clears throat> this is one of the really great things about um, this hobby is um, 
there's always new stuff happening every single day you wake up you do your little round you do your rounds of your plants see you know who needs what who's doing what and uh, there's always new stuff going on it's very nice uh, I don't actually really even have room for all that stuff in my house um, I just enjoy the process of experimenting and watching things happen and uh, just all the extra stuff I can give away as gifts to people I love I could possibly sell stuff at some point I'm just uh, at the moment I'm just enjoying it and seeing how it goes summer is gonna be tough it's really really hot in summer here and that might be a challenge keeping some of the things alive especially things like strawberries so my room is north facing so actually not very well lit um, so I only dare to have a Z plant in here um, those can tolerate super low light and uh, yeah I can't experiment putting expensive plants or um, sensitive plants in a low light situation <laughs> but uh, the Z plant is a very popular house plant because it's super low maintenance and it's been doing fine over here also took a bunch of cuttings from this one to propagate uh, pothos is also pretty uh, hardy tolerates a lot of abuse I might put this one in my room also, but once it grows some stronger roots, because I got, I propagated this from a bunch of cuttings that I got from somewhere, and the, yeah, the roots are still pretty small. This is a beautiful African violet. Love this plant. And this is just a boring Dracaena, but you can probably tell that I have favorites. <laughs> Anyways, it's doing okay. Um, and in here, this is another north facing room. And uh, I've got some medium and low light plants in here. But it does have, I mean, it is still pretty close to the window. And most of these plants can actually see the sky. So it's not so bad. This is a uh, peace lily, which I am hoping will flower soon. But it's got new leaves coming here doing quite well monstera adinsoniae asparagus fern avocasia look at these guys just this room used to be so boring it is boring no more um, this is a, a green aglaonema uh, maybe silver bay not sure what the name of the variety is uh, it's got a yellow leaf here, but that's just aging. Um, it's an old leaf. It'll probably fall out soon. And it's got a little baby plant coming up here, so a bit later uh, in the spring or maybe summer, I can divide these. So this plant will be on its own in a pot, and we'll leave this one. And this is my living room and my living room plants. Uh, this is another type of aglaonema. Um, that also hates water, like the Crescina does, uh, but it's not green like the other Aglaonema, it's much more colorful. And these varieties tend to need a bit more light. These are next to an east-facing window. Might actually... I guess it's starting to droop a little. I think I'll water it tomorrow. Um, it had some problems with its roots when I first got it, so I put it in a burlap sack for more aeration and air pruning of the roots. Um, this is a huge ruffle, fluffy ruffles fern. If you love ferns, you love this one. Just love the shade of green that ferns usually have. Um, this is a Monstera Deliciosa. Just got repotted recently in a bigger pot and it's quite happy about that. It's a type of peperomia. And the Z plant cutting. This is the first begonia I ever got and it is doing super well. So much new growth. Rex begonia. Beautiful. 
And here's another fern. Got underwatered for a while, so it's not doing so well. But I think it's starting to come back. And this gorgeous pothos is a marble pothos. Look at the variegations on that one. It's so pretty. I propagated this one from cuttings from a friend. The other peperomia that I have, it needs a bit of a haircut because it's starting to get leggy. See how this branch is kind of starting to fall outwards. This is a very nice device for measuring the air temperature and humidity level. You can see humidity gets pretty low where I am. Um, so uh, whenever I see humidity drop below like 50 or 45, I have to jump into action a little bit. Some of these things like ferns and tropical plants, a lot of them, a lot of these plants are tropical plants and they don't like uh, dry weather. Especially young ones that are not well established, I will just do something like this. Keep the moisture in a little bit, raise the humidity inside, and I will sometimes put the device inside here so I can see what the humidity is inside where the plant is. Even in my bathroom, which is quite small with a tiny, tiny sink, I could not resist this awesome afternoon light. It's a begonia. And that's a nerve plant. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tour of my plants. It's really crazy. I got into this in the space of like two months maybe. I went from having no plants to having all this. So I apologize again for the delay in posting content. Uh, I still have a lot planned for this channel, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you to my patrons who have stuck with me through this little hiatus. And uh, please check me out on Patreon and other social media down in the description below. And uh, most importantly, please leave a comment, ask questions, share your experiences. This is, this is what keeps me going the most. I get messages from parents of visually impaired children. I get messages from other visually impaired people who want to share their experiences and compare notes. And this is really what makes me feel like these videos have value. And as long as th this continues, I will continue to do this. So uh, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.